we've had some amazing features to show you. With enterprise grade semantic models, it's not uncommon for these models to grow in scale and complexity. After all, they are reused throughout enterprise organizations. To that end, we recently introduced a modeling view in Power BI Desktop that scales to hundreds of tables, as you can see here. And we can now break out the diagrams into separate diagrams, into separate subject areas. And we can create new subject areas or diagrams. And so in this case, I'm going to find, in fact, let me search for the table. I have so many tables here. And we'll bring in maybe Dynamics 365, the one I often use. And I can now add related tables. And uh, again, I can break these models out into as many diagrams as I want to make it very easy to manage all of these tables. Another thing that you can do with this new diagram is you can multi-select objects. So in this case, I'm going to multi-select three columns and I'm going to set the display folder property. I'm going to call this one Find Me Easily. And display folders is actually a feature that has been in analysis services for over a decade. And it is precisely to allow consumers of these complex models to find what they're looking for easily. I'm now going to switch over to another model. This data set is data for a crowdsourced courier service where a smartphone app emits the driver's locations and it generates a ton of data. Each row in this driver activity table represents an individual location emitted by the app. This location count measure, as you can see, is simply the count of the rows in the table. So everything looks completely normal at this point, And I'm going to casually drag this uh, measure onto the canvas so that we see how many rows are actually in this table. So you may be thinking at this point, you know, as an enterprise scale uh, business intelligence platform, we may even be talking about the billions, maybe a hundred billion. Actually, this is a trillion rows. This is a quarter of a petabyte of data, and it's coming from HDI Spark. And as you saw, I just got instant response times. It is so uh, interactive. So let me bring uh, distance traveled. I'm going to break it out by date. I'm going to make it a bar chart. I'm going to break it out by the miles per job. I'm going to make it nice and big. It's like slicing and dicing through butter, just clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy data analysis over these massive data sets in a way that was physically impossible before. The way that we're making this happen is we're actually caching the data into memory in Power BI just like we normally do. But in this particular case, we are caching the data at the aggregated level. This is using the feature called aggregations, right? So we're caching the data at the aggregated level, which unlocks these massive data sets in a way that was physically impossible before. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually filter this data set just for the locations where the driver left the company. And I'm now going to cross filter by clicking on December 23rd. And I will break out location count in another visual and I'll break it out by driver name. So I've just interactively over a quarter of a petabyte of data generated a list of drivers who worked on December 23rd, performed jobs of over 50 miles and subsequently left the company. I'm now going to select one of these drivers. Let's go with Abigail Johnson. And I'm going to drill through to another report. Now, this one will take a little bit longer to, to load because we're no longer at the aggregated level. We're not heading that in-memory cache. We're now going to plot the actual movements for Abigail Johnson on this particular date on the map. So therefore, it is now submitting a direct query to the source system, which in this case is HDI Spark. And this will work on many of the big data systems on SQL Data Warehouse, on Azure Databricks. And as we can see, if I refresh this, we've actually got a query running. And if we come in here, we can actually see the query. And there we can see the, the, the query for Abigail Johnson. And this should be done any moment. And then we'll see the actual 
uh, movements for Abigail Johnson on this date. So she had to drive all the way across Memphis, maybe picked up another job just before the holidays. In the end, she left the company. She's probably doing very well now. The point being, we unlocked quarter of a petabyte of data in a way that was physically impossible before using a tiny fraction of the memory requirements. And we achieved this balanced architecture where we're using Power, Power BI for what it's really good at, which are these aggregated business intelligence queries. And when the user happened to drill down to the detail level where there was no aggregated cache, that was okay. It just submitted a direct query to the source. And these source systems tend to deal with these non-aggregated targeted queries very well. And all of this is completely seamless to the user experience. This will truly transform interactive analysis over big data.